Warning, this video is very annoying. That is, if you want to farm some of the mounts I'm about to talk about. As in this video, we'll go over 10 of the most annoying mounts to possibly farm in WoW. And at number 10, we have the Ultimate Karaji Battle Tank. This is a mount obtained from archaeology, Tolvir archaeology fragments specifically. You see, you get this mount randomly when you complete Tolvir archaeology fragments. So, all you have to do is just farm a whole bunch of archaeology for Tolvir archaeology fragments, and you'll get this mount eventually. But here's a little catch. You don't get to specifically farm Tolvir fragments. Those dig sites just pop up randomly on the map sometimes when you're doing archaeology in Kalimdor. So most of the time there won't even be dig sites in Uldum, which is the only zone that will drop your Tolvir artifacts. So what you can do is just complete all of the dig sites so that they'll eventually reroll to a new zone, and then eventually they'll show up in Uldum. And then once you do get your artifacts, you just randomly complete whatever is your current research project, which is assigned to you randomly each time you complete a research project. Until eventually, you'll roll on the one that allows you to create the ultimate Karaji battle tank, which can take quite a while. There are ways to speed this up, however. If you don't want to randomly farm for Tolvir fragments, which I wouldn't recommend because it takes forever, you can just simply do archaeology in Mista Pandaria or above zones in order to get things called restored artifacts, which you can turn into a vendor which will allow you to buy a box full of a couple of Tolvir fragments so that you can complete your Tolvir research projects without having to go out and randomly find dig sites in Uldum. Now, how you get restored artifacts is by completing research projects in new zones, so Miss, Warlords of Draenor, Legion, and BFA, in which case sometimes you'll randomly get an item that you can convert into a restored artifact. So overall, it's actually faster to just farm out restored artifacts than it is trying to farm Tolvir fragments directly. But both of these are very time consuming and makes it so you have to do a lot of archaeology. And there are some reports from people who actually managed to obtain this mount that it takes about 125 completions before the mount project shows up. Although it could show up in one of your first 10 completions too. It's random, so it could take you forever, or it could be a very simple and fast process. But it is one of the most annoying mounts to farm because it requires you to do a lot of archaeology, which is why only 8% of the player base actually owns this mount. As a comparison, 10% of players own the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder mount which requires you to do a crap ton of fishing in one specific pool in the Broken Isles Dalaran. People are more willing to fish than they are to do archaeology, which should tell you something about how annoying archaeology is, especially since people have been able to obtain the ultimate Karaji battle tank for a lot longer than they could the bottom feeder mount. And at number 9, we have the Ashhide Mushan Beast. This mount is obtained in the Timeless Isle from a vendor for 500 bloody coins. And it's obtaining these coins that makes this mount so hard to farm out, as there's two ways to gain bloody coins. One of them is to use the item Sensor of the Eternal Agony, which lowers your health by 90% when you use it, and then it allows you to kill Horde and Alliance players no matter your faction, just as long as it's on the Timeless Isle, and each kill of an enemy player will award you one coin. So ideally, you just use this item and then kill 500 players in the Timeless Isle and you have your mount, which was probably possible back in Mist of Pandaria, when Timeless Isle was current content, but it's much more difficult in every expansion afterwards, where there's rarely people on the Timeless Isle. Well, outside of Mista Pandaria Time Walking Week, since the Time Walking Vendor is located on the Timeless Isle. Although even then, you have to be in war mode in order to kill enemy players, even if you have the availability of killing both factions. And the other way to obtain bloody coins, which is the much easier way, is with the item the Fire Watcher's Oath. This item will allow you to obtain bloody coins in PvP activities outside of the Timeless Isle, although it used to be at a much lower drop rate, of only having a 10% chance per kill to get one coin, as you do have to get the killing blow in order to obtain a bloody coin. So having to farm battlegrounds and get killing blows, where only 1 in 10 would actually give you a bloody coin, took a very long time, or at least around 5,000 killing blows. You'll probably passively obtain it as long as you just remember to keep the item up over the course of a couple of months. Or at least that was the case until Legion, when Blizzard hotfixed the item to give it a 100% chance to give you bloody coins on kills, but you still need to land the killing blow. And the item itself has a 10 minute cooldown, so if you die early before it comes up, you won't actually have it 100% of the time while you're in Battlegrounds. I have heard reports of people just getting two groups together of opposite factions on the Timeless Isle, 
and just taking turns killing each other in order to get bloody coins faster. I don't know if this actually works or not, but it sounds like something that would probably work. Either way, only about 7% of players actually own this mount, and it's slightly more annoying to obtain than doing archaeology. I actually had to learn how to do archaeology in order to write that segment on the number 10 spot, because I wasn't sure how the restored artifact system even worked, despite the fact that I've been playing the game for over 10 years. I will also mention, there is a little bit of a more sketchy way to obtain bloody coins faster, which involves repeatedly killing a friend's trial character over and over while they respawn instantly at a spirit healer, but I'm not sure that's something Blizzard really wants you to do, and I'd rather not advise you to do things that would get your account banned. I'm also not sure if that method even still works, so on to the next spot on this list. And at number 8, we have the Phosphorescent Stone Drake. This is a mount that drops from a rare mob in Deep Home named Aonax, which has a 100% drop rate and will drop for everyone in your party. So what some people will do is post on their Discord server that they found this rare mob in order to invite four other people so that everyone can obtain the Stone Drake. And even with this gracious way of obtaining the mount, only about 4% of players have it. Because you see, finding this rare mob is the hard part. The mob has a 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer in Deep Home spawns in multiple locations, and shares a respawn timer with a random rare bat. Now, a respawn timer of about 5 hours on average means you have to spend a day camping this thing out if you want a chance to obtain it, which is an incredibly long time to fly around the zone looking for one rare mob. But if that's all it took, then they would have a much higher collection rate, since WoW players on a whole are perfectly fine with camping something out for long periods of time in order to get something cool, like a mount. What makes this mount difficult to obtain is the fact that it shares that respawn timer with a bat. Because if the bat respawns, then you have to wait another two hours after killing it before the stone drake has a chance to spawn again, as it has that minimum two hour respawn timer. So what some people will do in farming this mount is just take two hours break after they kill the bat, because there's no way the drake can spawn any earlier than that. It's really this shared respawn timer with another mob, and the fact that it has a long spawn timer makes it so you could camp out this mount all day and never actually find it. Or someone else will randomly come across it and take it without you knowing, and then you won't know how long you have to wait for another respawn timer. This mount is awarded to people who have lots of free time on their hands, or can afford to fly around the game for 8 hours at a time looking for one dragon to kill for a mount, which is why it's an annoying mount to farm. And at number 7, we have the Void Talon of the Dark Star. This mount is obtained simply by clicking on an Edge of Reality portal which will port you into your own little instance that will allow you to click on an egg, which gives you a mount 100% of the time. And this one is hard to obtain in the same way that the Phosphorescent Stone Drake is. As long as you can find the portal, you'll get the mount. But finding the portal is the hard part. You see, these portals spawn once every 13 to 48 hours, which is a much longer spawn timer than the 2 to 8 hours from the previous spot on this list. And the portals can spawn at almost random locations across Draenor from the Warlords of Draenor world map. And I say almost random locations because there technically is set locations for all the portals. It's just there's a lot of them and they're spread all throughout Draenor. And when a portal spawns, it only lasts for 5 minutes. And if no one clicks the portal in 5 minutes, it will despawn and then respawn somewhere else at random in about another hour. And it will keep doing this until someone clicks on it. In which case, it will enter its 13 to 48 hour cooldown. The thing is though, there's no real way to track if someone else has already clicked on one of these portals. So someone could have clicked on the portal yesterday, and you could be looking all around Draenor for it to not be able to respond until the next day, as people can just randomly find these portals while questing through the zones. And since finding one of these portals is so difficult, the Void Talon has only been collected by 3.4% of the player base, which is an incredibly low number, and only slightly lower than the previous spot on this list. And at number 6, we have the Reigns of the Grey Riding Camel. In order to get this mount, all you have to do is kill an NPC called Dormus the Camel Hoarder, who has a 100% chance to drop it. And just like the previous two spots, finding this NPC is the difficult part. You see, the only way to find this NPC is to be teleported to his location by finding a camel figurine. And the camel figurine is at one of 50 spawn locations around Uldum and the figurine will spawn in one of those 50 locations once every 4 hours or so. So it has a 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer. And once you find the camel figurine, there is only a 5% chance that it will actually be the correct one. The other 95% of the time, the figurine will just turn into a trash item. 
and then you start the 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer again. And just like with the edge of reality portals, you won't actually know someone else has clicked on the camel figurine in the past 2-8 to eight hours. So you could spend all day looking for one, only for someone else to have clicked on it randomly earlier on. And this is the nerfed version of this farm. It used to have a 4-12 to 12 hour respawn timer. So here's some tips to farming this mount, thanks to some of the people are in the wowhead comments. You can only obtain the camel figurines in the Cataclysm version of the zone, so make sure you swap that over if you have the BFA version unlocked on your character. Then just fly around to all of its 50 spawn locations, and then swap over to war mode, as that counts as a separate server, and then check again. And then you can use trial characters on different servers to do the same method, until you basically get bored of looking. Because even doing this, and potentially looking on 50 different servers per day, there is no guarantee that you'll actually get it after checking 100 times, because of that darn little 95% chance that it will turn into trash. Which is why this little mount only has a 3.4% collection rate, which is the same as the Void Talon, despite the fact that the Void Talon mount came out two expansions later. And at number 5, we have the Chudon Reigns of the Terrified Pack Mule. This mount is randomly obtained from world mobs that have Hex Thralled in their name, from the zone of Drustfar in BFA. Now, BFA added a couple of other world drop mounts, and they all have much higher collection rates than the Terrified Pack Mule, who was obtained in basically the exact same way as all the others, just killing a whole bunch of specific mobs in a zone. Now, according to the people who've undergone the mob grind in order to obtain this mount, the reason this one is so much harder to obtain than all the other BFA world mounts is because the mobs you have to farm are more spread out. So there's no super farm spot like all the others have, and the mobs take longer to spawn. You see, for the BFA world mount Captured Dune Scavenger, for example, there is a hyper spawn location at this one little location on the map, which is also sometimes a world quest. You can basically just put a group of four people together and constantly kill mobs all day until you get the drop, since the mobs will spawn so quickly. And all the other mounts have a similar place, even if it's not as great as this one particular mount. Except for the Terrified Pack Mule. That one requires hunting down the mobs associated to it, and all of these mounts take about 5,000 kills on average before you get a drop. Luckily though, you can just buy this mount off the auction house if someone else is selling it, which is not the case for almost all the other mounts on this list. But even with the availability of buying this mount off the auction house, it still is by far the least collected of all of the BFA World Drop mounts, clocking in at only a 1.8% of people owning it. The mount is either rarely on the auction house, costs too much for the people when it is there, or is just too much of an annoying grind to actually obtain. Although since this is one of the newest mounts on this list, that also contributes to why it has such a low collection rate. Now, if you do plan on farming the BFA World mounts, make sure you do it in groups of four, because if you fill up your party with a group of five, then other people in the area won't be able to tag the same mobs. And at number four, we have the Mighty Caravan Brutosaur. This mount can be bought simply from a vendor with gold, and is probably the easiest mount to obtain on this list. However, this mount makes this list at such a high spot because of how much gold it costs. Since the vendor doesn't allow any reputation bonuses, this mount will cost you 5 million gold to purchase or in terms of WoW tokens, based on US server prices when I made this video, it can be thought to be worth over $500. Now, farming out 5 million gold is basically impossible for the average casual WoW player, and definitely requires you to intentionally go out and farm gold, as there's no way to passively make 5 million gold in expansion. Especially since the mount will be going away once the next expansion, Shadowlands, comes out, and it will be moved to the Black Market Auction House where I can guarantee you that it will go for gold cap every time it shows up, as there's lots of players who have tons of gold saved up because they like to play the auction house for an expansion or two for fun, who might just quit the game for BFA and then decide to come back for Shadowlands and then think, hey, this mount has an auction house on it and is super useful. How about I use all of my money to buy it once I see it? And so for the average WoW player, farming out 5 million gold is quite the feat. Now, there's many different ways to make 5 million gold, but if you were to do pure gold farms, it would take you a longer amount of time than trying to obtain pretty much all the other previous spots on this list. Or not, this list isn't about mounts that take the longest to obtain, and are about ones that are the most annoying to obtain, as I think getting the pack mule might take longer than getting this one. Let's take running normal Skyreach as an example. This is one of the quickest dungeons you can run that gives a respectable amount of gold, 
as you can vendor everything and expect to earn about 400 gold a run. And since it's short and fast and has a teleport back to the entrance after killing the final boss, you can run the entire place in about 5 minutes, and there's an instance lockout of 10 runs per hour. So, if you run normal Skyreach 10 times an hour, because Heroic locks you to 1 per day, that could net you about 4,000 gold an hour. Which would mean you'd have to run Skyreach for 1,250 hours in order to get enough gold to buy the Brutusaur mount. Or in terms of runs, you would have to do normal Skyreach 12,500 times. And this is a really good gold farm if you're trying to farm for just pure gold that is, i.e. not having to deal with the auction house or sell things to other players. And if one of the best pure repeatable gold farms takes you 12,500 runs in order to obtain one long boy, that should give you a good scope of just how annoying this mount is to farm. Kinda. It can be fun if you find a whole bunch of creative methods to make gold, as there's lots of them out there. I wouldn't recommend running Skyreach 12,500 times but maybe a handful of times on characters who've already exhausted their other gold making methods for the day, it could be a way to push your way towards the goal. So even though this mount can be bought from a vendor with no other special prerequisites other than having a crap ton of gold, it's only owned by 1.4% of the player base. That number probably won't go much higher once it's removed from the vendor in Shadowlands. But if you're crazy enough to actually try to farm out this mount, I'd highly suggest putting on a good podcast or audiobook so that you don't go crazy from the boredom. Which is actually a nice segue into the sponsor of this video, Raycon. Now, when it comes to earbuds, whenever I'm playing video games, I prefer to use wireless ones because it's real easy to accidentally pull the wires out with your chair or when you stand up to get something. But I also prioritize comfort and Raycon definitely delivers on that front. They have the nice kind of earbuds that go into your ear with the soft tip and block out noise on the outside and pair up real easy with my Bluetooth connector, even faster than my old pair, which was a pleasant surprise. And the Everyday E25 model holds about a 6 hour charge, with the earbuds being able to recharge in the case that holds them. The case and earbuds have a compact design, a variety of different colors to choose from, and if you buy them from my link in the video description, you get 15% off your order. So that's buyraycon.com slash to get a pair for yourself so that you can listen to podcasts while you grind for raw gold for 8 hours a day for the next 6 months. And at number 3, we have the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, who has a whopping 0.6% collection rate, which is the lowest collection rate of all of the mounts on this list. But again, this video isn't about the rarest mounts or the ones that take the longest to obtain, just the ones that are the most annoying. The way to get this mount is by simply killing the Shah of Anger world boss in Mists of Pandaria. And the Shah of Anger spawns on a pretty reasonable respawn timer and isn't that hard to find and kill on each of your characters, as you can only kill and collect loot from him once per week per character. So if you have 50 characters that are all able to kill the Shah of Anger, that's 50 attempts per week. But here's the thing with the Heavenly Onyx Clown Serpent. It has such a low chance to drop that people didn't even know it was obtainable at the launch of Mist of Pandaria. They just thought it was another mount Blizzard added to the game files and were just never going to be made available to the players, as there were a lot of Cloud Serpent models that weren't available at the start. But people have absolutely been farming this mount ever since Mr. Pandaria came out, and even then it still has a less than 1% collection rate. According to some Wowhead comments, some players were able to get the mount after only 5,000 measly kills, with a couple of people reporting upwards of 8,000 or more kills. And since you can only kill it one time per week per character, I can assume it took them years to get those kinds of numbers. And at number 2, we have the Time Loss Proto Drake. I'm sure most people thought of this mount when they first clicked on the video, as this mount is kind of famous for being an annoying mount to farm. As it's very aptly named, you will waste a lot of time trying to farm this mount's spawn locations. Now, this mount is obtained in pretty much the exact same way as the Phosphorescent Stone Drake, where you have to kill a rare mob, that has a 100% chance to drop it. It has a 2 to 8 hour respawn timer, and shares a spawn timer with another dragon called Ragosa, who spawns much more often. Now, the Time Loss Proto Drake is so famous for being difficult to obtain, that you can usually talk about how difficult a new mount added to the game is, in comparison to getting the Time Loss Proto Drake. It does have about a 4% collection rate, which is a lot higher than some of the other mounts on this list. Although I should probably mention, that's still an incredibly low number for a mount that's been obtainable for over 10 years. And I totally would have put this as the number 1 on this list, it's basically what this list was all about. 
It's just the number one spot is definitely the most annoying mount to farm, and I'm sure most people won't disagree with me on it. And at number one, we have the Big Love Rocket, which is a mount that can be obtained from killing the holiday boss during the Love is in the Air holiday event, which is the World of Warcraft equivalent to Valentine's Day. Now, this mount has about a 1% chance to drop from the holiday boss, which is not half bad when compared to the drop chances of things like the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. But here's the thing with the Big Love Rocket. You can only attempt the boss for two weeks a year. Once those two weeks are over, you don't have a way to try farming it again, and you just have to wait a year. When the Big Love Rocket was first added to the game, players in mass thought it was bugged. So Blizzard had to create a blue post to confirm that no, it wasn't bugged, it just had a very low drop chance. Although, I do have a friend who was able to get the Big Love Rocket for the very first time she ever tried farming for it. Probably not that annoying to some people who are super lucky, but for like everyone else, this is the pinnacle of annoying mount farms. One that you can't even try for, for 99% of the year. Because at least with the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, you can try to obtain it all year round. So the Big Love Rocket is just more a frustrating grind because you can only grind it for such a short amount of time each year in addition to the fact that it has an incredibly low drop chance. So with all 50 characters on your realm, you can only attempt to farm this mount 700 times per year, which sounds like a lot of attempts, and it is, but I'm sure most people don't even know there is a 50 character cap on your account, let alone have enough max level characters to attempt that grind, or high level characters. So you're probably looking at something around two to five high level characters for the average active player, which equates to about 28 to 70 tries per year, which isn't really that much when it comes to farming a 1% drop chance mount. All right, and that's the end of the video. Are there any more annoying mounts to farm that I might have missed? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments for potential another video on the same topic. This video was edited by the lovely Flying Buttress, so if you enjoyed it, you'd probably enjoy the videos on his channel as well, as they are also highly edited and scripted videos. And also, did you know, only 30.1% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel?